Welcome to our fourth grade flipped video on the metric units of measurement. Let's start about how we use what units of measurement we use for measuring length or distance. First, we have a millimeter, and a millimeter is really small, and as you can see at the top, it's really tiny. Then we have a centimeter, which is a little bit bigger, a decimeter, a meter, and a kilometer. Measuring volume and capacity, with those, you're going to use a milliliter and a liter. And measuring weight and mass, you're going to use a milligram, a gram, and a kilogram. Let's go over some benchmark measurements for measuring length or distance. A centimeter, that's about the distance but across the tip of a finger. And as you can see, we have a picture of that, and that's about one centimeter. Again, everybody's body is different, but if you ever want to know what a centimeter is, look at your index finger and look at how wide across it is, and that would be a centimeter. Next, we have a millimeter. Well, uh, 10 millimeters equal one centimeter. So if a centimeter is the distance across the tip of your finger, a millimeter is about across the tip of your nail because it's way smaller because you need 10 of them to make one centimeter. So a millimeter is smaller than a centimeter. Then we have a decimeter. And the decimeter, if you open up your hand, the distance across your palm from one end to the other is about a decimeter. And there are 10 centimeters and one decimeter. When you think about the word deca, it has decimeter, it has deca in it, which means 10. Meter. If you look, a meter is, well, remember whenever we talked about how long a yard is? Well, a yard is from your fist to your shoulder. Well, a meter is from your fist to your shoulder and a little bit more. So that would be one meter. And 10 decimeters equal a meter and 100 centimeters equal a meter. And if you're measuring length or distance and you want to do kilometers, 1,000 meters is one kilometer. And to do a kilometer, it's about walking from our school to Culver's. That would be a kilometer, which is a distance that you're going to have to walk and take some time to do. So if you're measuring something in kilometers, you have to know that it's something that's really long. Okay, if you look at this picture right here, we actually have a yardstick, which is down here, and a meter stick, which is up here. If you look at the yardstick, it's 36 inches. And if you look at a meter, it's 39 and a little bit more. So I want you to know that a meter is just a little bit longer than a yard. And if you look at this comparison, it shows you that. So let's review our benchmarks for length. A centimeter, about the length across the tip of your finger. A decimeter, across your palm. A meter is from your fist past your shoulder a little bit more, and a kilometer, you're going to have to go for a nice walk for that one. Let's talk about our benchmarks for capacity. A milliliter is really tiny, and so when you look at that, this is a dropper. And anytime you've had a dropper, either for eye drops or for medicine, that's a milliliter. So that's something that's really small. Then you have a liter, and if you've ever seen one of these soda bottles or something like that, that would be a liter. So let's review our benchmarks for capacity. We have a milliliter and we have a liter. And so those are things that you can see around your house. One liter is 1,000 milliliters. So it's going to take 1,000 drops of a milliliter to fill up a liter. Let's talk about measuring mass. A metric unit for measuring mass would be the gram. And a gram is about as light as a paper clip. Whenever you're thinking about a kilogram, that's about the weight of a textbook, like our science textbook or our math textbook. So if you think about it, a gram is something really small and a kilogram is a little bit bigger. And there are, in a gram, there are 1,000 milligrams in a gram. And there are 1,000 grams in a kilogram. The good thing about the metric units of measurement is that they always go in sets of 10. So a centimeter is 10 milliliters. A meter is 100 centime 
centimeters and a kilometer is 1000 meters. So it's like you're multiplying by tens, which is really easy to remember whenever you're trying to convert them. Not like customary units of measurement where you've got one foot is 12 inches, one yard is three feet, one mile is 5,280 feet. This is a lot easier to remember. And most of the world uses the metric units of measurement. We're the, one of the few countries that continue to use the customary units of measurement. Okay, let's go to converting units of measurement. This is so much easier because everything is in groups of hundreds, tens, or thousands. So it makes converting a whole lot easier. Let's start with, I have five kilometers. So if I have five kilometers, how many meters are in one kilometer? I'm gonna give you a second to think about that. And did you get it? It's one thousand. So all I have to do is take five times one thousand, which five times one is five, and then all I do is add the zeros on the end. So five kilometers is five thousand meters. Now I'm going to go from meters to centimeters. Do you remember how many centimeters are in a meter? It's one hundred. So um, if you look, I'm going to take 6 times 100, and that's going to give me 600. So there are 600 centimeters in one meter. Now I'm going to drop down to millimeters. How many millimeters are in a centimeter? And if you remember, that would be 10. So there are 10 millimeters in every centimeter. So I'm going to take 2, multiply that by 10, and that is going to give me 20. So there are 20 millimeters in every centimeter. And if you look, each one of these goes up by 10. So if you take 10 times 10, that's 100. So, and then if I go from centimeters up to meters, that's times 10 again, which is 1,000. So really it's jumping up and multiplying by 10 every time you go up to a larger unit of measurement. So that's why customary units are so much easier. Okay, let's go backwards. Remember, fly to horse, divide, of course. If I'm going from meters to kilometers, I'm going to take 5,000, and I'm going to divide that by 10. So I know that for every, there are, I'm sorry, not by 10, I'm going to do it by 100. Because there are one, no, it's not 100, it's going to be 1,000, sorry. There are 1,000 meters in every kilometer. So I'm going to take 5,000 divided by 1,000, and that gives me 5, which I didn't even have to do the steps with that because that's so easy. That's why I love customary, or metric units of measurement because it's so easy. Now... I know that there are 100 meters, or 100 centimeters in every meter. So I'm going to do 1, 600 divided by 100, and that gives me 6. So that would be fly to horse, divide of course, centimeters to meters. There are 6 meters for every 600 centimeters. Then this is going to be by 10. So I'm going to take 80 and divide divide it by 10. So eight, 10 goes in, I'm sorry, 10 goes into 88 times. So these conversions are super easy whenever you're doing them. Just remember everything goes by 10. It's going up by 10s or down by 10s. And so it's super easy whenever you're doing the multiplication and division, unlike customary units of measurement. So just remember, horse to fly, multiply, fly to horse, divide of course, and remember your metric units. Of Let's talk about perimeter. Perimeter is the distance around the outside of an object. To find the perimeter, you will add all the sides. Something to help with perimeter is perimeter equals sum of all sides, so as. And in our last video, you learned that sum means addition, so that means add all the sides. Area. This is the space inside of an object. Area equals length times width. 
and you can see length is the L times the width, which is the W. But this formula only works for the area of a rectangle or a square. Perimeter. Let's talk about perimeter and do some practice problems. So, perimeter is the distance around the outside of an object. To find the perimeter, you would add all the sides. And remember, P equals so as, sum of all sides. So, let's start right here with this square. Well, we know that a square, all the sides are the same on a square. So, that means that I'm going to take 16 and I need to add it four times. Because I know one side of the square is 16, so all the sides are of the square are going to be 16. So I'm going to fill that in. I'm going to do 16 plus 16. 6 plus 6 is 12. Carry the 1. That's 32. Instead of adding 16 again in 16, I'm just going to do 32 plus 32. 32 plus 32 is 64. So the perimeter equals 64, okay? If I were to put inches here, then it would be inches, okay? Here, I have 26 and 12, but I need to make sure that I label all of my other edges. So I know that 12 plus 12 in my head is 24. And then I'm going to do 26 plus 26. which equals 52 plus 24, that's 76. So the perimeter will be 76. And whatever it's labeled as, if it's labeled as centimeters, I need to make sure that I label that also. So 76 centimeters. Let's make this feet. Well, this shape has one, two, three, four, five sides, which means it's a pentagon. So I still need to add all the sides, and this pentagon has the same measurement for every side. So instead of adding eight five times, I'm going to use my basic facts, and I know eight times five is 40. So this would be 40 feet. Okay, let's move on to area. Area, inside the area you have squares, okay? Area is the space inside of an object. Area is length times width, but this formula only works for the area of a rectangle. So here I have my area, which is, I'm going to call this centimeters. So all I have to do is length times width, and I want you to get in the habit. Anytime you see area, I want you to write length times width. Anytime you see area. Okay? So, 2 times 7. Well, 2 times 7, I know from my basic facts, is 14. If I count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. There's 14 squares inside of this rectangle. So, I know that that's going to be 14 is going to be my answer. So the area is going to equal 14, and this time I'm going to put centimeters squared because when you're dealing with area, you're dealing with square centimeters. So I'm going to write centimeters squared. Here, I'm going to do again length times width, which is 3 times 7. I'm going to make this one inches. So 3 times 7. Well, that equals 21 square inches. So you need to make sure that you are labeling this this way. Now, my square down here has gotten cut off, but I know that a square has all the same sides. So I know that all the sides are going to be 3. So again, the length times the width, 3 times 3 is 9, and I'm going to make this feet. So this would be area equals 9 square feet. Okay? Now, this side, I am going to call this the width because this is how wide the shape is. This side is the length because it's how long it is. So this would be the length. This would be the width. 
I'm sorry, I switched that. This is the length. This is the width for how wide it is. Again, this shape right here, this is going to be the width because it's how wide it is and this is how long it is. On a square, it really doesn't matter what you decide the length and width is because they are the same. Now here I have a triangle, and my triangle got cut off down at the bottom, but I'm going to work this anyway because I want you to understand that if you come to a shape like a triangle or like a pentagon, you have to count the squares. So I'm going to count the full squares first. There's one here, two, three, four, five, six full squares, and I know you can't see these full squares at the bottom, but there's six. Then I'm going to count the half squares. These two together would make that 7. These two together would make that 8. So this would be 8. That would be the area. And let's say I put square meters. 